Hi everyone, well I'm back again and as I said in the last video I'm going to show you how to do fuchsias I'm going to do them two ways uh, both without a cutter which is the one that you've got there and one with a cutter which is this one here the ones without cutters actually are easier to do so if you can do it that way then uh, that's fine but they're done the same way as um, we've done when we've been doing um, the filler flowers so I'll take that away I've got a, uh, that one's a bi-coloured one uh, I've got a couple of other colours here that I've done as well just separate flowers uh, I've got a purpley coloured one there and a yellow one they come in all sorts of different colours do Freesias, so uh, it's up to you. There's lots of different colours out there to choose from. So, uh, best form of uh, identifying the colours is to get hold of a catalogue from a firm that uh, does the actual flowers, and then you can decide on which ones you're going to make. Right. So, I'll get some paste out. Now first thing that you need to do is to uh, make your stamens for your centre uh, which is, I use the ready made stamens for these so you buy these in bunches like that and I'm just going to take off three stamens out of the bunch and then if you get yourself a, a 26 gauge wire <coughs> which I've already cut. I cut the wires into three when I'm making things like this. Sorry, I picked the wrong one up there. That's a 26 gauge wire. And I use white tape for this. I don't put any colour into anything when I'm doing freesias until I've made the whole thing. So we'll start off by putting the stamens onto the wire. So you start at the very top of the wire, get your tape going, get your three stamens together that's if you can get hold of them any ladies watching will probably find it easy to get hold of them because you've got smaller fingers than us fellas so put your stamens in showing about half an inch to three quarters of an inch and then start your tape off and tape down remember to stretch your tape and twist with the other finger and you can do it very quickly like that once you get used to doing it right so once you've got your stamens on there I'm just going to get rid of those for now and we'll come back to the paste now so what I'll start off with first of all is I'll start off with the uh, cutter one this is the technically the most difficult one to do I think anyway because a lot of people have difficulty with Mexican hat bags which we tend to talk about quite a lot when we're doing separate flowers particularly things like stephanotis, jasmine and um, that type of flower, cherry blossom all those sort of things that are done on one wire so I'm going to start off with a ball of paste roll that into a cone they have got quite a longish back on the back of the flowers so if you just have a look at that one that I've done there you can see that it's got quite a long back same with uh, Stephanotis as well that's another one with a long back but that's a different shape and then start between your finger and your thumb and work your paste round like that so you've got the hat brim this is what we call a Mexican hat back for those that haven't done it before some fat onto your board get your paste on and this is where you need the uh, cell sticks uh, the ones that I, uh, that I use that I get for my students are these that come in two different sizes you've got this um, fatter one and then there's also a thin one like a cocktail stick type because you need to be able to get right up to the base of there if you use the big rolling pin you couldn't get anywhere near that so um, and I've just dropped my 
cutter, just bear with me a second. I've dropped it. Sorry about that, butter fingers. I shouldn't have put it near the edge of my board. Like I keep saying to people, it just proves the point that things go wrong for us, no matter how long you've been doing it. So, uh, roll out as thin as you can, and check your cutter over the top of that central piece to see if it fits. I need to go in a little, this is why you need a a very small rolling pin because you need to get right into the base of that to be able to get it thinner at the bottom. So once you're on, you've got it on the board you shouldn't be taking it off. That's better. Cut out the first part. So that's that part. So you've got that. We'll just pop that to one side for a minute. I'm just going to roll the paste out again because I need another three petals for this. Got a bubble there, get rid of that. Cut out another set of petals, this time without the Mexican hat back. Take your excess paste away. Just put that to one side. And then you want to go onto your mat to thin your edges. And the ball too, there we are. Thin your edges, starting from the middle going out. It's just to take that cut edge off. And do the same on your Mexican hat part. There we are, that's that done. Next thing you need to do is to get this between your two fingers. Picked a hair up there, get rid of that. And with your, I like to put a bit of veining into all my petals because I think they look a bit more lifelike if you put some detail into them. So just roll it on your finger like that. Always start from the middle rolling out to one side and then the other side and then do the same with the other set of petals. That's it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the ball tool in the middle there just to hollow that out a little bit. Then you want your glue. Just a little bit in the centre there, that's all you want. Then get your other three petals over the top, position them in between the others like that. And then get your centre with your stamens and twist that down into the cone so it comes out the bottom of the cone like that pull that down until the stamens just disappear into the paste and then between your two four fingers roll the back of your paste down onto your wire like that and then just pull your petals up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hang it upside down on some foam to dry so that I get the petals to stay down like that. So that's how you want it to be. And before I go there uh, I've got a pair of nail scissors here. What I'm going to do is rather than putting a calyx on like some people do I find it a lot better to cut into it. Just cut a little V on either side like that. It just looks a bit neater. The calyx is very small on the flower and you don't want a chunky looking calyx on it otherwise it looks a bit out of proportion. 
Right, away from that, back to the paste. This time, roll your paste into a ball. I oh, just need that bit more, I've got some cracks in it. Try not to have any cracks in it, so you get a need to finish on your paste. Roll it anti-clockwise to get rid of your creases, then roll that into a cone, like that. And then this time I'm going to use uh, this this tool here. Um, most firms that do tools do these. Uh, usually I've got either gem or PME. And you've got six points on one side and five points on the other. We're going to use the six points because there's six petals on a fuchsia. So just put that down into the centre like that. And that gives you a guide as to where you're going to make your cuts. So back to your nail scissors and in each of those cuts, cut through your paste like that so you've got six petals back to your pad I'll just put my light on so we've got a bit more light it started going a bit dull outside so uh, I'm losing my nat natural light Right, then with your ball tool go in and just pull your petals out like that. Now if you're good at pulled flowers and you can do it on your fingers that's fine. I just find that this is a lot easier way of doing it and also as well you tend to find that you get your petals more uniform. Like that. Check all your petals to make sure that they're all the same. Okay. Now with this method I don't tend to thin the edges because I'm going to go in with the, uh, to put the vein in again. So if you get it on your finger and just roll it out like that from one side to the other. It does widen the petals a little bit but that's fine. And roll out. Like that, with each one of them, like that. Then when you've done that, now this is optional. I have done it on the ones that I've done there, but I would like to put a central vein up the middle of my um, petals, because having a look online at some pictures of uh, freesias, they do seem to have a, a vein up the centre. So with your Dresden tool, narrow end, just make a little vein up the centre of your petals. I didn't do it on the other one but I can go back and do that anyway because it's not dry yet. Just makes them look a bit more interesting. Just to go back to that one and do it on there before that dries. The only problem I find with the cutter ones is that what you've got to be careful of is that, uh, and this did happen to me when I was making up the samples, that uh, the petals I find break off of these a lot easier than they do on the, uh, the others. These seem to be a lot sturdier. And then the other thing that I'm doing then is I'm pinching the edge of the petals round like that. So I've got a bit more movement into the petals. You can do that on the unwired one as well. Just pinch the edge of the petals. And don't, don't, that one doesn't want to go where I want it to go. That's it, got it. Gotcha. Don't mind if I mutter to myself, I do that a lot. There's only my cat to hear me doing it, so uh, nobody to argue with about that. And somewhere I should have a centre ready for that. And I've lost it. Never mind, I can make another one up. So again, Three stamens folded in half like that. 
back to the tape. Always make sure that you stretch your tape before you saw this and pinch it in with your nail, just get your nail in right up against your wire just to make sure that that's stuck together otherwise you won't get it started. Get your stamens in. Doesn't matter if they're not all exactly at the same level because nothing is perfect in nature. There we are. And then into the centre of your flower right down through the base pull it down until your stamens are just showing then thin the back of your flower now when you're making freesias there are a heck of a lot of buds on the stem of a freesia as you can see on that one there on the real flowers they actually go a lot smaller than these but that's always a bit difficult when you're doing them by hand to get them so small and I find that a lot of people have more trouble with things that are small than things that are larger then like the last one I'm just going to clip the calyx into the bottom like that okay and turn that over and put that to dry I've all got, already got some that are uh, dry so uh, now bud wise you can use a thinner for your small ones use a thinner wire so I'm using a 28 gauge wire for the uh, thinner ones and then use a 26 gauge wire for your larger buds that are near your flower because you need to uh, go through them in size so you've got different sizes you don't need your wires to be too long for this because it's going to be taped onto there but what I'm going to do what I didn't do on there was to uh, put another wire on to tape all my buds on it makes it a little bit sturdier then so you find that it doesn't uh, wobble about as much now then for the small buds because they are really tiny I had just put a bit of uh, paste on, a uh, bit of uh, glue on the end of my wire. So you're going to start off with a tiny, tiny little ball of paste like that. So get your wire into your glue and straight into your bud. Don't wait with this because if you do, you'll find that the uh, tape on your wires will start to unravel. And then it makes a bit of a mess so what you need to do first of all is make it a bit pointed on the top and then just go underneath the bud and thin it in down the back of the bud like that now sometimes if you've got a bit too much glue on which I have here it can be a bit sticky I don't do anything else with the small buds because they're too small to see any detailing but the larger buds I'll just do a bigger one so I'm going to start with a larger ball of paste. I do put some detail into those. I also put a hook on the end of the wire as well for this. Because on the bigger buds you've got more paste to get that into. Judging looking at my time I'm going to have to uh, do two videos with this. So there'll be one for making the flowers which is this part I don't do any leaves with them either because the leaves grow from the base of the plant a bit like daffodils and tulips and things like that so if you bind the flowers to put in a vase you don't get the uh, the leaves with them so if you thin the top part of your bud like that so it's thick in the center so you're almost getting this sort of like two-ended like a, a spinning top type shape and then what you need to do then is if you get your uh, cutting wheel if you've got one if you haven't anything a knife would do or anything like that and you want to cut into this three grooves like that so there's one there go a bit further around put another one there don't worry if they're not too even because we're only putting three into it so it's very difficult to gauge exactly where they are but you've got three grooves into it so that's your three outer petals that would open to reveal the uh, three inner petals although when they're open they look fairly even anyway 
So I'll put those away to dry. And then you want a lot of buds here. So I've got all of my buds here in different sizes. And then when you come to assemble them, then what you need to do is you need to sort out the size of your buds with the smallest one first, then going up in size with each one that you've got. Getting your sort of size. It doesn't matter if they're not exact, but if you can get them as near as, damn it, all different sizes like that. Have I got any more on there? I think that's it. I haven't put quite as many buds on this one as I have on the other one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to do a second one. And in this one I'll put it all together and I'm, I'll colour it. So I'm going to do that one which is a bicoloured one. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And uh, I have mixed a few colours here so it'll give us a bit more time to uh, take time showing you that. So speak to you shortly.